Hello and welcome to your news and features electronic magazine that centers on the different facets of motoring. Now on its 34th year, this is Motoring Today. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall have Attorney Romel Gutierrez, to discuss how the auto industry is coping with the COVID-19 pandemic. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smarts portion centers on what to do when one encounters a double solid yellow line road marking. This week's Bayong Super shall be about the importance of wearing seat belts. The public service segment centers on netizens' complaints on the closure of U-turn slots on EDSA. Showcase this week shall have a sports car from Toyota, the Supra 3-liter automatic. All these was the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. who still have not gotten the RFIDs needed to be able to use the tollways have gotten a reprieve. The November 2 start of full cashless transactions at toll gates has been moved to December 1, 2020. The DOTR has moved the start of full implementation of cashless transactions at tollways from November 2 to December 1, 2020. This comes after San Miguel Corporation, or SMC, and Metro Pacific Tollways Corporation, or MPTC, said that while they are already prepared for full cashless transactions by November 2, they are still being deluged by motorists needing RFIDs, which could cause operational problems. On their own, both had earlier announced that they would continue to allow motorists without the needed RFIDs to use their tollways beyond November 2. Even before the DOTR moved the deadline to December 1, MPTC, which operates the NLEX, SCTEX, Cavitex, C5 Link, and Calax, had said it will still allow motorists without RFIDs to enter its tollways after November 2, but they will be directed to RFID installation lanes. SMC, through subsidiaries, operate the Southern Tagalog Arterial Road Tollway, SLEX, and the Skyway System, Naia Expressway, and the Tarlac Pangasinan La Union Expressway. SMC said 
that in consideration of the many motorists who have not been able to secure an auto sweep RFID account, it has decided to extend the deadline to November 30. In a press release, DOTR Assistant Secretary for Road Transportation and Infrastructure Mark Stephen Pastor reminded motorists to make use of the extended deadline to have RFIDs installed on their vehicles as early as they can. In the same release, Toll Regulatory Board Executive Director Abraham Sales said Secretary Tugade allowed the extension in order to give motorists, especially infrequent toll road users, more time to comply with the department order and to prevent the long queues currently being experienced at toll roads in the rush to get the RFID stickers. But mind you, this will be the last time that we will be extending. No more extensions beyond December 1. There is one more thing that the press release said. Motorists who fail to conform to the government mandate will be apprehended and issued a citation ticket. SMC's Ramon Ang sure knows how to make people feel better in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Ang's Feel Good Initiative involves the Skyway 3. First came the good news, the Skyway 3 the 18-kilometer elevated roadway linking the South Luzon Expressway to the North Luzon Expressway has been fully completed ahead of schedule. This was first announced by Ramon Ang of San Miguel Corporation, who promised that after the needed finishing touches, Skyway 3 would be open to motorists by December. Then came the even better news. Mr. Ang then announced that motorists can use the Skyway 3 gratis et amore for the whole month of December. Privately funded and built by SMC, at no cost to government and with no guarantees, Skyway 3 provides a seamless connection between SLEX and NLEX, cutting travel time from one expressway to the other to just minutes instead of hours. The Skyway 3 is also seen as an alternative to EDSA with eight access points in Buendia, Plaza de Lao, Nagtahan, Aurora Boulevard, Quezon Avenue, Sergeant Rivera, Balintawak, and Enlex as it traverses through the cities of Quezon, San Juan, Manila, and Makati. With Skyway 3, we will improve the daily commutes and lives of so many Filipinos. We will lessen their time spent in traffic on the road. We can increase both their productivity and time spent with their families, Ang said. Construction of the Skyway 3 took six long years. Now, motorists can't wait to experience driving above the congested streets of Metro Manila. That'll happen in a few short weeks. <music> Authorities are going to implement a scheme to help public utility vehicle operators and drivers to provide continuous, reliable, efficient, viable, and safe transport service while under capacity restrictions as communities and the economy struggle to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. Authorities are moving to provide a form of subsidy to allow public utility vehicle drivers and operators to continue providing transport to commuters, even under reduced capacity, to maintain social distancing protocols. Under the service contracting program, government provides payouts for public transportation services where qualified operators and drivers are given performance-based subsidies based on vehicle kilometers traveled and compliance with agreed-upon performance indicators. The disbursement of payouts are to be scheduled weekly. The payouts or subsidies will be on top of what drivers and operators collect in fares. A third-party system manager will monitor the performance of the operators and drivers to ensure the performance standards are followed. All drivers of public utility jeepneys and public utility buses plying the open routes during the various community quarantines are qualified for the program. Government projects 30,000 PUVs will be included in the program and because each will be contracted for 18 hours a day or two shifts of drivers, 60,000 drivers stand to benefit from the subsidy. Under appropriations included in Republic Act No. 11494 or the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act, $5.580 billion will be allocated to fund the service contracting program for three months. Projected beneficiaries of service contracting should be asking government to facilitate the implementation of this subsidiary program. 
The public should also actively seek information about this program and demand transparency. After all, 5.580 billion pesos is a lot of money. The establishment of a massive railway network is a priority of the current administration. And a massive railway network needs knowledgeable and skilled workers, employees, technicians, and engineers. The Department of Transportation and the Commission on Higher Education are working on this need. The DOTR and the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, have signed a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, to fast-track educational and skills development programs and certifications for railway employees and workers. This is in line with the government's plan to establish massive railway networks from Luzon, the Visayas to Mindanao, and this needed skilled workers, technicians, and engineers. Transport Secretary Arthur Tugade said access to available courses and trainings for existing and future railway personnel is crucial in view of the numerous and massive railway projects that the Duterte administration has laid out. It is my hope that with the partnership initiative we have strengthened today, the country will soon be known as a primary railway manpower source. I'm looking forward to witness our railway personnel step up and achieve significant milestones in their chosen career, not just for themselves, but also for the benefit of the Filipino people," said Secretary Tugade. CHED Chairperson Prospero de Vera III said that the MOU with the DOTR Philippine Railways Institute, or PRI, is crucial towards the development of human resources in the railway sector and government's commitment to the maintenance and expansion of efficient, fast, safe, and dependable transportation systems. Under the MOU, the CHED will focus, among other things, on developing a system of credits for the certification trainings of the PRI to be converted into academic units, while reviewing the content and outcomes contained in the PRI certificate program. CHED is also looking at including subjects related to railways into the curriculum of engineering courses or as elective subjects in engineering colleges. The CHET will also develop university-to-university -university linkages between Philippine and Japanese universities for joint research and development projects on railway development. This is a healthy sign for the development of railway networks. The establishment of railway systems can be another major generator of jobs as the nation struggles to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. And those are the latest news in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum, brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. The auto industry has been hit hard by the lockdowns and the community quarantine restrictions as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Motoring Forum discusses the state of the industry as it heads into the final quarter of the year and how the players are coping. We are in the final quarter of 2020, a year that has, to say the least, not been kind to the automotive industry, communities, and the economy. For starters, 2020 saw the Taal eruption disrupt auto sales. Current president of the Chamber of Automotive Manufacturers of the Philippines Incorporated, or CAMPI, reminds us this was 2020's first knock on the industry. As you recall, no, January, January pa lang, eh, we already started with the calamity. Eh. Remember the Taal volcano eruption, di ba? It's like a uh, buena mano to the industry. So <laughs> as early as January, the sales was already down. No, We saw a negative growth of 11.8% uh, from the 28,000 units sold in the same period last year. And right after a good February, allowed the auto sector to make up for the bad January. The COVID-19 pandemic shut down the economy in the middle of March. As the lockdown lengthened from week to week, with dealers unable to open and auto assembly factories remained shut, Campy lobbied for dealerships to open. By the time private cars was the main form of transport, autos need servicing, and many people 
frontliners and those in essential services were looking to acquire their own transport for convenience and more importantly, to be safe against exposure to the virus. At that time, actually, Campi wrote uh, DTI, you know, asking for recommendation or some assistance, basically, to, to ask IATF at that time. To allow dealers no, to operate at a limited scale because, you know, vehicles are, are very important even during ECQ. You know? When the government began to ease community quarantine restrictions and allow more sectors of the economy to reopen, albeit still in limited capacity, the damage has been done. Auto sales were down by more than half, and the industry faced the difficulty of recovering lost sales. The auto sector understood that people were still looking to buy cars and responded with aggressive marketing strategies and reaching out to buyers through the safest route possible online. Not a week seemed to pass by without a new car being launched, a new promo announced. Even dealerships opened, positive signs of a reviving economy. We think people still want to buy cars, no? but uh, literally they cannot go out, especially during the quarantine. No? So with this, the brands have to adjust to this new normal by going online and uh, Customers responded positively. As we need to recover lost sales, industry players really go double time by giving out promos and good deals. And uh, this really helps uh, boost sales. The manufacturer of autos also suffered. While some decided to stop local assembly altogether, others like Toyota are keeping plants open and at the very least continue to locally assemble vehicles to meet the decreased demand. Basically, we follow what the market uh, dictates, no? And uh, the market so far has turned down by uh, 30 to 40 percent. Our production correspondingly adjusts to the demands of the market. The auto industry knows it will not fully recover sales lost during the lockdown, but it understands the importance to the economy of a resurgent auto industry. That is an added incentive for the industry players to work double time to reopen dealerships, drive up sales, and provide service to customers. Definitely, we do not expect this year to be the same as last year, no? To date, the sales is already down by uh, 40%. So we do not expect to recover the 40% in the coming months the closing months of the year. No? But we are happy to see that figures of the past months are beginning to show positive signs. So there's signs of recovery. We just have to minimize the impact of uh, the pandemic this year. Indeed, the auto industry is a big contributor to the national economy. No? With sales recovering over the past months, the industry is also generating more revenues or recovering lost revenues from the past months. And uh, this bodes well for the government in terms of taxes. No? So as we recover, more taxes to the government and we're confident that this will continue. And we hope there will be no, no more strict quarantine, no more lockdowns. Finally, the auto industry believes the country and the economy will overcome the COVID-19 pandemic with everyone, every community, and every sector of society and the economy doing their share to stop the spread of the contagion and working to revive the economy. I'm sure we have already adjusted to some extent to this new normal, okay? So even the auto industry have really gone to some extent in adjusting it's a marketing and production side. No? So let's continue to be positive about the events happening. And um, hopefully the, the uh, vaccine will, will be here. But more importantly, we should stay strong and healthy so that we could combat this uh, uh, the virus. No, We just have to live with it. But again, this will come to pass. There's a sense that the auto industry is learning how to continue generating sales, how to provide the services needed by auto owners, and how to rebound from a bad year and do well in the next. 
It's also reassuring that the industry understands that how well it does in rebounding from the lockdown induced slowdown will also help the economy recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. That's more Inform this week, brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA 2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Today and in line with our lifelong commitment to promote road safety, here is this week's road safety tip in cooperation with Toyota Motor Philippines. Kadalasang makikita ang double solid yellow line sa mga tulay. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay bawal kang mag-overtake sa kahit anong oras dahil maaari kang maaksidente katulad ng ipinapakita sa animation. Roads that have double solid yellow lines are often busy so, be a responsible driver at wag mag-overtake. Continuing with this week's edition of Boring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. From Mitsubishi Motors Philippines, here is Spying to Pair this week. Payong Stoper lang kaibigan. Ako si Alejandro Patosa, isang kapwa niyo Stoper. Huwag kalimutang magsuot ng seatbelt sa tuwing kayo ay papasada. Gawing prioridad ang kaligtasan habang namamasada sa pamamagitan ng pagsusuot ng seatbelt. Siguraduhin maayos at gumagana ang iyong seatbelt bago mamasada. Huwag mo rin kalimutang paalalahanan ang pasahero na nakaupo sa harap na magsuot ng seatbelt. Tandaan ang paggamit ng seatbelt ay isang tiktibong pamamaraan o pangmanatiling ligtas sa oras na anumang aksidente. Ito po si Alejandro Patosa. Payong super lang kaibigan mula sa isang kapwa nyo super. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA 2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 
2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. We start with the latest news and developments. Julian Tang ruled the AM class, while Alexis Clapano emerged as winner of the Pro class in Race 2 of the Phoenix Pulse Formula V1 Virtual Cup. The virtual race is a simulation of the Autodromo Nacional de Monza racetrack on the PC-based Assetto Corsa game saw the return of winners and many more of the qualifiers of Race 1 which saw a reverse grid of finishers in the previous round. Finishing second behind Tang was AM Class Race 1 winner Andre Varquez who also set the fastest lap in the class. The last place of the AM Class podium was taken by Real Lerpido. In the Pro Class, Clepano took the lead on second lap and never relinquished it while setting the fastest lap on his way to winning race 2. Coming in second was Luis Moreno. Third was Daryl Brady, who edged Inigo Anton for the final step of the podium. A. Alif of Singapore topped the 2020 GR Supra GT Cup Asia Regional Finals, winning two and finishing third in the one of the three races held to determine who would represent the region in the Global Finals. The Ayman of Malaysia finished second in the point standings of the regional finals of the e Sports One Make Racing Championship in Gran Turismo Sport on PlayStation 4. And Sirigaya of Thailand finished third in the championship that saw 15 e-racers from five countries competing using the GR Supra on tracks that simulated real-world circuits. Representatives from the Philippines performed creditably, with Terence Liave finishing fifth overall, GL Tiveros 11th, and Lance Padilla 12th. Alif will represent Asia and compete with the world players at the GR Supra GT Cup 2020 global event to be held this December. e Sports is one of the key pillars of Toyota Gazoo Racing, bringing thrill to car enthusiasts and excitement to those looking for new challenges in the virtual world. And that's this week's World of Motorsports. Motoring Today continues right after this break. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now.
Welcome back to Moldering Today. Let's now take a look at what's happening in the local auto industry. Honda has rolled out the all-new city, bigger, more spacious, and featuring the latest automotive and smart technologies buyers now expect in top-end models and marquees. It comes in four variants, 1.5 RS CVT, 1.5 V CVT, 1.5 S CVT, and 1.5 S MT. New are chrome front grille, front bumper, LED daytime running lights, halogen projector lights, LED tail lamps, power adjustable door mirrors, and power folding door mirrors with integrated side turn signals for the 1.5 RS CVT and 1.5 V CVT variants. All variants now come with one push start system across all variants and smart keyless entry system for 1.5 RS CVT and 1.5 V CVT. An 8 inch advanced touchscreen display audio with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and WebLink is available in the 1.5 RS CVT, 1.5 V CVT, and 1.5 S CVT variants. The all new city is powered by a new 1.5 liter four cylinder DOHC IV Tech engine that generates 121 PS at 6,600 RPM and a maximum of 145 Nm of torque at 4,300 RPM. Except for the base model 1.5 SMT, the all new city comes with continuous variable transmission. MG Philippines has a lot more reasons to celebrate than two years of stunning growth in the local market. Since its local debut in October of 2018, MG Philippines has grown its dealer network from 12 to 28, spread over the country, a number it expects to raise to 34 before the year is out. It has sold well over 5,000 of its MG ZS crossover, including more than half of 2,854 MG vehicles it sold from January to September of this year, even while coping with the effects of the pandemic. Aside from the ZS, MG also is doing well with the MG5 sedan, the RX5 SUV, and the MG6 Fastback. Now, in the new normal of selling vehicles while under the threat of COVID-19, MG has come up with innovative ways of selling and servicing its patrons. Among these innovations are MG Live Chat Support Service, which allows consumers to do web-based live chat with an MG consultant, the My MG app for easy PMS scheduling, MG Online Garage for online vehicle consultation and remote vehicle diagnosis over video chat, and MG Mobile Garage, which allows consumers to schedule home repair service on their MGs. No need to bring your MG to a dealership for repairs. The crew comes to you. And sooner than later, you can check out, reserve, and even buy your MG of choice online with the soon-to-be-launched buyanmg.com. On buyanmg.com, you can virtually experience visiting an MG showroom, getting a 360-degree walkthrough, live video chat with sales consultants to discuss product details, promo offers, and after-sales services, make reservations on the MG of choice, and complete the sale online. In celebrating its second anniversary, MG also unveiled its plans for 2021, which include launching a new MPV, a new SUV, and holding a formal launch for the RX-8 SUV. Also planned is showcasing the ZS EV to provide Filipinos a glimpse of MG's cutting-edge EV line. Honda has rolled out a refreshed CRV, all tweaked and loaded to take on all comers in the seven-seater SUV segment. It arrives with redesigned front bumpers and grille and other exterior tweaks, including LED headlights alongside LED fog lights and front sequential turn signals and newly designed 18-inch alloy wheels. The seven-seater variants of the new CRV are powered by a 1.6-liter DOHC IDTC turbo diesel engines, 
mated to a 9-speed automatic transmission, which produces 120 PS at 4,000 RPM and a maximum torque of 300 Nm at 2,000 RPM. The refreshed CRV also comes with a 5-seat variant powered by 2.0-liter SOHC iVTEC engine mated to a continuously variable transmission, which produces a maximum output of 154 PS at 6,500 RPM and peak torque of 189 Nm at 4,300 RPM. The Honda CRV SX Diesel 9 Automatic All-Wheel Drive comes with all the bells and whistles expected of top-of-line 7-seater SUVs, including 8-way power adjustable driver's seat with 4-way power lumbar support, 7-inch touchscreen display audio system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, wireless mobile charger, Honda Sensing Suite for driver assistive functions, hands-free access power tailgate, and panoramic sunroof and auto rain sensing wipers. Motoring Today now brings you our Car of the Week on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Toyota sees production of its iconic sports car, the Supra, in 2002. 17 years later, the first fifth-generation Supra rolled off the production line of a factory in, of all places, Graz, Austria. Does the new Supra live up to its iconic name and reputation? The launch of the Supra was among the most awaited events of 2019. The return of the most celebrated sports car from Toyota has generated a lot of excitement globally and among local car enthusiasts. When it was first revealed to the world at the Detroit Motor Show, the excitement grew even more, especially locally. Will Toyota make the resurrected Supra available in the country? And the question most asked, will it be even more exciting in the metal? Yes, was the resounding answer after the sneak peek at the Clark International Speedway during the Vios Racing Festival, and even more yeses when it was formally launched at the Manila Polo Club. Many car enthusiasts loved that the new Supra retained much of what made the old Supra an iconic sports car. A little shorter, a wee bit wider, and just a touch taller at 4,379 millimeters by 1,854 millimeters by 1,294 millimeters than its predecessor. The new Supra maintained the long bonnet, short deck design of iconic sports cars. It also sits low above the pavement with a 115 millimeter minimum ground clearance. Toyota also decided on a 2,470mm wheelbase that is said to help allow a 50-50 front-to-rear weight ratio for better handling at speed. The nose cone look is new. There are creases and air intakes, real and fox. It's a little curvier, but the placements and proportions, if not the whole design, of the LED headlamps with integrated daytime running lights still recall the headlamps of the old Supra. The same goes for the slim integrated lights at the rear, which comes with unobtrusive spoiler, LED rear fog lamp, backup lamp and high mount stock lamp, dual exhaust tailpipes, and distinctive bumper. The exterior also comes with auto windshield wipers, outdoor mirrors with dimming, color keyed grip type door handles, glass type antennae, The new Supra interior is as sporty as sports cars go, with carbon and silver aluminum trim, and seats upholstered in Alcantara material. The dash layout 
is best described as driver-centric. The instrument panel comes with an 8.8-inch TFT LCD display that can show speedometer, tachometer, and other vital info. The leather-wrapped three-spoke steering wheel features paddle shifters and controls for audio, phone, and cruise control. The infotainment system uses 8.8-inch widescreen TFT LCD touchscreen display and comes with USB and Bluetooth connectivity, navigation software, JBL 12-speaker hi-fi surround sound system. Adding to comfort and convenience inside the fifth generation Supra are push start system, dual zone air conditioning, accessory outlet in center console. Much of the controls for various functions and displays can be controlled with what Toyota calls the Supra command, which is basically similar to the BMW iDrive system. The new Supra powertrain stays true to the inline six engines that made the old Supra so popular with sports car enthusiasts and racers. The fifth generation Supra is powered by a 2,998cc, six-cylinder inline, twin-scroll turbocharged gasoline engine. The engine generates 335 horsepower from 5,000 to 6,500 revolutions per minute and 500 newton meters of torque from 1,600 to 4,500 RPM. All that power and torque drives the rear wheels via an 8-speed automatic transmission. The Supra also comes with a limited slip differential. Stopping power comes from a brake system using front ventilated discs with four piston fixed caliper and rear ventilated discs with one piston floating caliper. The Supra suspension features double joint type McPherson struts in front and a multi-link system in the rear. It also comes with adaptive variable suspension. The latest generation Supra also features wide rear tires, 275 by 35 R19 tires, wrapped around 10JX 19-inch forged aluminums. In front are 255 by 35 R19 tires, wrapped around 9J by 19-inch forged aluminums. For safety and security, the Supra is equipped with various airbags. The Supra also comes with vehicle stability control, traction control, and anti-lock brake system. Many have been lucky enough to test drive the fifth generation Supra agree that it has the horses, and ride and handling characteristics that live up to the Supra name. Does it deserve the 5 million plus SRP? That boils down to budget and taste. That's our featured vehicle on this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program. 100% worry-free driving. Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA 2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 
2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. We now have our segment that dwells on the wide array of motoring problems, not only in the metro, but all over the country as well. This is where we present problems referred to us or we ourselves see and hope to fully find solutions for. Here's our public service segment brought to you by Honda Cars Philippines. Back in September, the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA has started the gradual closure of U-turn slots on EDSA, the one near a mall being the first. According to the agency, this is in line with EDSA busways full and complete operation. But before we delve into this, the MMDA has received backlash when the closure started as many motorists claimed that no announcement was made prior to the closure. The MMDA, on the other hand, said that directional signs were placed to guide motorists to routes that could be used in place of the U-turn. As of the moment, three of the 13 U-turn slots, both northbound and southbound, were already closed. The one near Trinoma Mall and North Avenue, the one in front of the Quezon City Academy, and the one near Corridor Street. With these closures, the MMDA draws flack anew, with netizens claiming that this move was not well thought of and an added burden both for the drivers and commuters. For instance, Florante Malazav commented that with the closure, a number of kilometers to be traversed were added and will therefore consume more fuel. He also shared what EDSA busway commuters might be enduring just to get into the bosses. Meanwhile, Marie Austria aired her frustration, especially with how jeepney drivers are affected. She even suggested to open intersections to help them out. We shall reach out to the MMDA regarding this problem, especially that 10 more U-turn slots are scheduled for closure. And that's our public service segment from Honda Cars Philippines. And should you yourself encounter more in problems that need immediate attention, please feel free to contact us. See the details being flashed on your screen. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on our social media accounts. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now in its 34th year, of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. Stay healthy and be vigilant at all times. On behalf of Butch Gamboa, our dad, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.